Oh, welcome back to Morning Break. A little bit of a rainy Tuesday morning. Mm -hmm. Good day for a boat ride. What do you think? It sure is. Why <laughs> well, not? For more than 30 years, a local nonprofit has been doing its part to study and protect dolphin along our coast. It's the largest all-volunteer group of its kind. And right now, today, they are taking Kyle along for a ride to see what they do and why this work is so important. Kyle, what can you tell us? It looks kind of clear out there right now. Uh, yeah, I was going to say when we walked up to the dock, I asked them who chose today to come out on the boat. And they said, I did. That's right. Um, but I, I got with the Dolphin Project and I tried to say, when can we uh, get together, get out on a boat? Uh, I want to thank the skipper, Tim Dunbar, for bringing us out here today uh, on the Wilmington River. You can see off in the distance there. It's a little darker, but it's not raining right now. It's calm and we're out looking for dolphins, if you will. I uh, haven't seen anything yet, but uh, we've got our fingers crossed that maybe sometime over this hour we'll spot something in the water and maybe we can bring that to you live. I want to bring in Peach Hubbard who is the president of the the Dolphin Project that is about to celebrate 34 years. So this is something that's been going on for quite some time. I'm not sure how many people are, are familiar with the work that the Dolphin Project has done. Take me back to the late 80s when this all got started. Back in 1989 there was a massive die-off of dolphins here on the coast of east coast of the United States and there was no research on dolphins in Georgia or lower South Carolina at that time. So renowned marine scientists founded a group of volunteers to go out and do photo identification research studies on the dolphins here. And photo ID means that we're um, re photographing the dorsal fin. That's how we tell dolphins apart. Each fin is unique to that dolphin like a fingerprint is to us. So it was uh, founded to be a 10-year study, and 34 years later, here we are. We're doing, we're going strong, and we've also added um, uh, education outreach to our program. We go into schools, we uh, give uh, programs to uh, clubs and rotaries. Anybody that wants to learn about dolphins, we'll be happy to tell them about them. The, the truth and facts about dolphins. There's right. a lot of misinformation out there. So what's the, what is the project like? I mean, how often we're, we're out today, you guys just kind of brought us along, but you go out on the, on the boat, how long do you spend, how many people, and, and what kind of findings do, do you have, you know, on a, on a monthly basis or, or annually? Well, we go out once a month. It's usually on a Saturday, except when we have WTOC with us. So um, we go out, we start on the zone. Each skipper chooses two zones to cover. They're adjoining zones. And so that we don't over skew data and have too many boats in one area. And we record the data that we, when we see the dolphins, we record their behaviors, the latitude and longitude, um, numbers, their sizes, and all our viable photos and data go to Duke University in the two databases up there. One is the Mid-Atlantic Bottlenose Dolphin Catalog, which is self-explanatory, covers the dolphins, bottlenose dolphins on the eastern seaboard. And then the other is the OBIS Sea Map, which covers marine mammals around the world. And researchers access these databases to do health assessments, abundance numbers, uh, migratory patterns, and all that sort of thing. So uh, that way we can keep track of, are the dolphins uh, declining? Are they uh, populate, populating? I mean, if they're declining, we have a problem because it means there's something wrong here in the water. And if their numbers go down, like they are in Brunswick, where they had all those factories spewing horrible chemicals in the water, um, dolphins were dying there, uh, fish were dying there, everything's dying there. It's like, hey, alarm goes off. It's like the canary in the mine shaft, you know? So they can tell that there's something wrong out here. So that's uh, very important that we monitor these dolphins to make sure that they are staying healthy and that they are reproducing, which they are. Back in the Gulf where they had that oil disaster, they're not. I mean, they're having big trouble down there in the Gulf, I mean, taking 40 years or 50 years to repopulate the Gulf for their dolphins. All right, what's the, uh, the odds you think we'll get lucky today for over the next hour or so? I sent out the memo, but whether they read it or not, I don't know. You're, you never know where they're going to pop up. It could be behind the boat, could be in front. You just never know. All right. Well, fingers crossed that we will catch something. Uh, thank you so much, Peach. And um, when we come back a little bit later on, if, if we spot something, we'll make sure we let you know and, and show that to you. But we're also going to talk about ways that, that you can get involved with the Dolphin Project, uh, support the mission, and also uh, support them with an event that's coming up this weekend. And I just felt my first raindrop, guys. Uh, we're going to send it back to you in the studio.